Hello everybody and welcome back to Gaming on Caffeine, my name is Isaac and we're back playing some Crash Landing for episode 13 and at the very end of last episode we unlocked ourselves the Creating Life section of the quest book which starts with the quest Lonely which requires 10,000 millibuckets of mob essence and one egg. Now the one egg we can do fairly simply, we have it right here. I believe it says that this is only the, yeah this is only for the QDS so we can't do the manual submit, that's not going to work. We have to select task, find our QDS, wherever we put that guy, and then throw this down somewhere and just stick an egg in it. So we can link like this, and I don't think we can like, yeah, that doesn't work. <laughs> okay, we're going to have to grab a hopper of some kind, which shouldn't be too big of a deal because we have quite a nice amount of iron. So we'll grab you guys, make ourselves a chest. And then we'll just grab some iron from outside, and we should be pretty good to go on that. So I think it's five, if I'm not mistaken. We'll take five of you, we'll throw you like this. Ta-da! We've got ourselves a hopper. Sound seems really low, I'm just going to bump it up, so I apologize if it does get too high. So if we throw that there, and we throw in a fresh egg. Unfortunately, we didn't get a chicken, that's kind of, kind of sad. Okay, let's uh, try that. Did that work? Did we win? Hey, look at that. We got one egg. Okay, so the next section is mob essence. We need 10,000 millibuckets of mob essence. And in order to do that, we are going to build ourselves a mob farm. Now, I'm going to go ahead and do the traditional, like, um, actually, I said the traditional. I've never actually done it before, but it is one that most people use. Uh, just sort of like a, a, a tall uh, two by two tube going all the way up with like a massive, I think it's 18 by 18 platform up top. I, yeah, 18 by 18 platform uh, too high so that we get like creepers, skeletons, um, spiders, zombies, etc, etc. We don't get things like Endermen so they don't get like stuck up there. And then we'll have water that pushes them down. And instead of having them die when they hit the floor or instead of th having them hit the floor for us to kill them, we're going to have them hit the floor and then be killed by the grinder, which is going to use, which is going to have um, a fluid to come out of it, which is going to go straight into the quest delivery system and hopefully that'll get us our 10,000 mob essence uh, but real quick before we do that I want to set up my automated gravel syst sifting system that's quite a mouthful gravel sifting system it's actually not that bad if you think about it but okay we <laughs> we're gonna set up our gravel sifting system which requires us to use some item ducts to connect this up to here so we have all the cobblestone that comes from our unlimited cobblestone generator uh, go into the barrel through to the pulverizer get pulverized out sent to the autonomous activator which is currently over here so we'll grab this guy we'll take you so we'll have that go to an autonomous activator which will then send stuff out to which will then sift through the stuff we'll then have the vacuum hopper pick them up and put them into a chest now where do i want to set this up hmm i'm thinking here maybe do we want it just like we could have it i guess just like this and then have the output on this side set to, yeah, so the output will go to here. So all of the gravel will end up in here. We can actually make this orange because I believe that when we sift through, um, when we sift through, or when we pulverize cobblestone, I think we get gravel most of, we get gravel every time. We have a chance of getting sand and we like to sift through sand as well. So we'll, we'll have both of those there. Uh, so yeah, I think that works quite nicely. We'll grab this guy from over here. I think our axe is going to do, oh, geez, go away. I thought we fixed this problem. How, how did, how, I don't even know. I, I don't even know. I even went around and put torches on top of all the slabs just to make sure they weren't spawning on there. I have no idea how that spawned. But uh, anyway, nevertheless, let's throw down, did we pick that up? Oh, it'll be in here, won't it? Uh, yeah, there it is. We'll throw this guy down here. We'll then take the vacuum hopper. And I think we're probably going to make uh, another chest because this one's pretty full at the moment. And I haven't had time to uh, to process all this stuff. And I don't really have anywhere to put it. Jesus, look at this. We've got eight, 19 eggs. Jeez. Okay, so we'll put this like uh, here, and I might have to move this eventually because this is kind of all a bit too close. I think what I might do is I let the, all the power in this run down, and then once all the powers run down, I think then uh, we'll move it to a more appropriate place because this is a bit in the way of everything right here. Uh, so we'll have that there, and then let's just say we grab like uh, a iron, and we'll make ourselves another iron chest because iron chests are super big, and we like super big. <laughs> Oh, okay, let's grab eight of you. We'll do something like this. And then something like, is it this? It is, nice. So we'll take that, and we can just throw that down here. Be sure to change the output on the vacuum hopper, otherwise it's just gonna hold all this stuff. Uh, you can press O to get rid of any eye. Uh, it's right mouse button to rotate it like this, and then left mouse button to select the one you're after. O to re-enable any eye, and that should be working just fine. So we'll turn that to an output. 
Uh, I have cooked up some glass so that we can use some iron, some redstone, and some glass to make ourselves a server. Like this. So we'll go for the thermal expansion server. Oh, they've changed the recipe. Sneaky little guys. Okay, so we need two seared brick, which shouldn't be too big of a deal. As you may have noticed. Oh, my mouse is dying. There we go. <laughs> As we may have noticed, we have some seared brick. Oh, we have some brick. So we'll take two cobblestone and we'll throw you into there. And that should be able to give us uh, two seared brick, which we can use to make our server. That's actually quite nice because it doesn't use any iron, which is, uh, which is nice. And we have pretty much infinite seared bricks. It's just uh, water, which we have infinite of from this guy. Then gravel, uh, this dust, which we have infinite of because it's just everywhere. And then cobblestone, which we have infinite of because of this guy down here. So yeah, we've, we've pretty much got infinite seared bricks. Um, also, what I'm thinking about doing is upping this as well. Because once we've got this thing automated and set up, we're going to have like infinite of everything <laughs> well not everything but we're gonna have like infinite of most of the um of the ingots right here uh, infinite things like diamonds emeralds stuff like that which means we have a lot of stuff that we need to smelt up so i'm thinking about setting up uh, an automated smelting system as well and making this high oven much taller so we could put like loads of ingots in at once now another really cool thing about the uh, the high oven that, that makes it really good for processing a lot of um, ingots all at once is I don't believe you can make alloys in this. So if you were to put in, say, uh, iron and ferrous, it wouldn't smelt together to make invar, which is sometimes a good thing and sometimes a bad thing. Like, if you wanted to make invar, it's not great. But when you want to just process a ton of stuff and you don't want to have to worry about things like molding together and doing all that sort of bad stuff that you don't want, uh, the, the high oven comes in really useful. Is this out of lava? No, it's not. It's just almost done. So we'll get that thread, and we'll just, I don't know what I said then, but okay, it's fine. <laughs> we'll, we'll take this, thank you, and this, thank you. Uh, I have a feeling we got the wrong seared bricks there. We did, we need grout, okay. We need gravel, sand, and, and clay. Do we have any grout lying about? We do not, I don't think. Um, oh no, wait, here we do, okay. We'll take two of you. We've actually even got one seared brick lying around. Do we have another one, maybe? Possibly? Oh, we do look at this. Chisel. Okay. So, apparently, we just had everything we needed. We just wasted a bit of time. That's fine. We'll take you. We'll throw you... We're hungry. Let's eat some... Uh, I made some toast. Uh, this is just bread and smelted. Uh, as you can see, I've eaten quite a bit of toast. It's not very nutritional for me anymore. So, we'll eat a kiwi. Some bread. And some more toast. That should do us for a little bit now. Okay, so with this, all we've got to do, right-click on here, make sure the redstone is set to ignored, and that should start to pull cobblestone out of there. And into here, start to pulverize it up, and then it should put that into here, as long as we make this left side an input, which I think that is. Is that right? It is, and then I'll start sifting through it, and we have it. We have ourselves an unlimited sifter of gravel, which will get us unlimited of all these ores, and will make uh, getting ores just pretty much easy as oat right now. So the only downside to this is we don't get bone meal from sifting through um, through sand, uh, through gravel. So we might have to still sift through some more dust at some point to get some more bone meal. Because bone meal is very nice to have. However, if we can get this mob spawner set up right, we might not have to. We might just have unlimited bones anyway. So we'll see how that goes. I'm going to go to sleep. And then what I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to go away and build this thing. Because it's probably going to take me quite a while to build. And you don't want to just sit here and watch me build cobblestone. So the way it's going to go is I'm going to... Let's just grab some stacks of cobblestone. Actually, let's... I'm... Hmm. I kind of want to dump my stuff away somewhere, but I don't really have any spare chests at the moment. Let's... Do we have any more wood? We had quite a bit, didn't we? Let's have a look. Yeah, let's make let's make like a double chest. We'll make some more chests. We need them. Okay, here we go. And um, we'll put you down like... Can we do this? We can. Okay, so we'll dump all that in there. And actually, I'm just going to dump everything in there. Because if I die, I don't want to lose anything. So we'll take all that. We'll just grab a bunch of cobblestone, like stacks and stacks of cobblestone because it's just it's gonna be pretty much all cobblestone so we'll take like all of this and basically what i'm gonna do is i'm thinking of building it outside on this side behind the smeltery over here like doing a similar sort of thing with the stairs going upwards and then just having like a little bridge that goes across and then a big mob grinder so i'm thinking about doing like i said the traditional way of building a mob spawner which is just sort of this 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 and this so a pillar like this going all the way up about i'm gonna go about 20 blocks uh, i think usually people go about 22 to 24 uh, i'm gonna go 20 because i don't want any of the mobs to die before they hit the floor i want them to be primed for the grinder to kill them 
So I'm going to go about 20 high with this, and then I'm going to build a massive 18 by 18 block on top of it. It's going to be too high, and then in the middle, uh, we're going to have some water running down it. But I'll, I'll, we'll be back in a second to show you the water and stuff. So yeah, I'm going to go build this. It's going to be flipping massive. I should probably take my pickaxe, and I should probably make sure it's got some obsidian on it, because otherwise we are going to get in trouble real fast. Um... We don't have any spare obsidian. We could always make some. And I think what I'm going to take as well is, uh, is some buckets of water. So that if we get too high and we need to come down, we can just... Ooh, there's a spider over there. So if we get too high... Oh, I don't want to attack him. If we get too high and we need to come down, we can just sort of like water pull down. Now, I believe what we can actually do is something like this. We can put the water in there. And then we can use a bucket to pull the water out. So actually, we have unlimited water in every sense right now. We could just... Not even just a limited drinkable water. We have unlimited usable water. Someone did point out that we could do this, and that means we can make this um, a lot better. We have got quite a few squid down there now, which is kind of cool. So, yeah, I'm going to take this. I'm going to do all that stuff, and I'll be back in a second once we have uh, all of that done. Okay, so a very long while later, and we have ourselves a very nice little 18 by 18, too high square uh, up in the sky. So what I've done is I've put some torches down just to stop mob spawning for the time being because I don't want them up here whilst I'm up here. Uh, we've got ourselves water, two blocks of water in every one of the like, little two middle sections over here. And the reason why we make it 18 by 18 is because with this four block in the middle, um, 18 by 18 means that there's like a nice little eight gap here. Which means that the water will be here and then we'll flow for seven blocks and then we'll stop where it would usually stop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick this up. And this is kind of how it's going to look to all the mobs. We're going to take the torches away. And if we press F7 real quick, you'll see that this is where mobs are just like primed to spawn. Uh, especially during the day. Because during the day there's going to be nowhere else for them to spawn apart from up in this block. So we'll get rid of all these torches. We might even start to see some spawn before we leave. But I don't know if we will. I think we have to be quite far away from them for them to spawn. So we'll get rid of all of these. And then I've put a little bit of a water pool at the bottom just to soften our blur down here. So we'll go, well, hey, there we go. And now we kind of just have to sit and wait. We can get rid of uh, this stuff here. I'm just going to fill this water in because we're just rolling in water right now. So what my plan is, is to get myself a grinder here. We can power it, it like the energy cell here, a chest on another side of it, and then having a fluid duct coming out of it and going into the QDS system where it will deliver the Mo Essence. Now, after we've done with the quest, I'll probably put that in a tank. I think we have a copper tank somewhere about, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Let's go have a look. I think we do have a tank somewhere. I've got all this stuff ready, so we could take these three. And I'm almost sure we have a tank. Uh, yes, we do. Look at this. We've got a portable tank. So what we can do is we'll get rid of those two. We'll take this guy and the quest delivery system over to the mob grinder. Hopefully, we should start to see some mob spawning pretty soon, I'm hoping. But uh, until then, let's throw down our mob grinder here. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw down the energy cell next to it. Uh, we should probably do this pretty quick because I can see mobs starting to spawn up there. And as soon as they start to fall, they're going to start to attack us. So we'll grab this guy. And this is the only power we have. I think what I'm going to do next episode is start on a little automated power system. And there it is. There's that guy. Did that even work? Nope, it didn't work at all. <laughs> okay. Oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Okay. Um. Um. Ow. <laughs> okay, that didn't really work. Uh, we got mobs spawning, which is good. But we've got a lot of them spawning, which is, which is not so good. And they are everywhere. Absolutely everywhere. Ow. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, let's get some blocks. <laughs> let's get some blocks. Let's cover this up. Uh, gravel will do. Gravel will do just fine. Okay, let's hope we can block these guys in. There we go. Whew, okay. They, they shouldn't be able to... There we go. Okay, that looks somewhat safe. Maybe. <laughs> okay, well, we'll break this. I put some fences down just so we can see if they're actually... Oh, gosh, that's a lot of stuff. Just so we can see if they're actually here. Uh, apparently, they are. So, what we'll do is we will grab our fluid duct. We'll have that coming out. And for now... Actually, I think... Hmm... Yeah, for now, we'll just have it going into the QDS system like this. Uh, make sure it's linked to the right quest. We'll do that in a second. Uh, you need to have a chest down because otherwise it'll stop working. So it needs to output items. And then we probably should have used something other than... We'll do this. And then we need our wrench to pick that stuff up. We're getting a lot of build-up in there already. I can see... Look at that. Look at that section on the minimap. There's like a ton of them. Jeez. Okay. 
Where is our quest book? Did we... Oh, it'll be in the, the double chest. Okay. So we'll take you and you. So we should be able to link the quest delivery system to the quest that we're currently doing just by doing this. There we go. Uh, Lonely has been linked. Let's pick this guy up, move him over, and we have got a lot of mobs. Is that working? Nope. We need to make this side here an output, which I think is that. And there we go. Energy is flowing in. Work is being done. We should start to see stuff happening. We are getting mob stuff spawning. And if we look at the quest book, we should see mob essence. Let's have a look. Creating life. And yeah, look at that. We've got 1,000. We've got almost 2,000 mob essence already. We're a fifth of the way there. So I'm pretty fairly confident that within a couple of minutes, looking at how many flipping mobs are in that little gap there, I'm fairly confident that within a couple of minutes, we are going to have uh, enough mob essence to complete this quest. We're almost halfway there. Oh my god, I'm being attacked. Almost, geez, always, oh, good thing it doesn't break blocks. If it broke blocks, that would be annoying. But it doesn't, which is nice. So then they're just going to continue to fall, continue to die, continue to give us mob essence, which is very nice. And I'm just going to sit here and hope that we don't run out of power. We, we we're not going to run out of power, are we? I mean, yeah, we can't run out of power. We're, we're over half, ooh, boots. We're over halfway there, and we've used like a third, well, maybe a quarter of the power. So yeah, I think I think we're okay. 70%. Uh, I think more of these are going to spawn if I move further away again. They seem to like to spawn when I'm not too close, but not too far away either. So they should start to spawn. We should get ourselves the, um, the quest done pretty soon. We'll take this stuff back, which is probably just gravel, is it? No, oh, it's bones and gunpowder. But I mean, look at this. We've got like 20 bones already, which is like 60 bone meal. We've got like another stack of bone meal just from doing that. We might not have to sift through some dirt again. Uh, dust again even. We do have more dust. I did do the, the whole trench thing with the, the fence and the slabs again. So we do have the stuff we need to do it. But I don't know if we will. There we go. It's done. So we want to take this back as soon as possible because I do believe that it'll just keep pumping stuff into here uh, indefinitely. Even if it can't, like, even if it's not going anywhere, it'll just eat it. So we'll get rid of that. We'll put the tank down there. And that should just start to fill up with mob essence on its own, which is kind of cool. So, with that, uh, they are going to start to fill up very quickly because <laughs> our grinder's going to stop working after when this... Actually, I'm going to take this back right now. Um, our grinder's going to stop working right about now. And Oh, we should probably move that. Our grinder's going to stop working. And then once our grinder stops working... And there's a ton of stuff here just sort of sitting on the floor. Once our grinder stops working, there's going to be a backlog of mobs just sort of sitting there. So, uh, yeah, we might have to... Uh, we're going to have to get a source of power fairly quickly. But uh, anyway, let's have a look in the quest book. We can claim our reward, which is to spawn a chicken, which, to be honest, we probably didn't really need. We've got a ton of chicken eggs, so we could probably get one for ourselves. But the main reason we did that, let's get rid of some of this cobblestone. Uh, the main reason we did it, and put this water back on, geez. Uh, the main reason I did it is because we want to do the rest of the quests. I want to spawn some of the other animals, and I want to know how to do it because I have not a clue. Okay, pigs. So it says, not as helpful as the cow or sheep. Okay, so not as helpful. Let's do the cow or sheep first. Cow. An ancient, uh, ancient spores can be used to turn a cow into a mushroom. Okay. Uh, steak, leather, and meat. What more could you want? So, oh, okay. So, oh, right. All right. So, if we can get 40,000 mob essence and eight leather, it's going to give us a spawn cow. That's, ah, oh, okay. So, I see what's happening here. So, these are all repeatable quests. You can do these every two days. So, what's going to happen is, and the, these ones can be done every other, every day. The uh, ocelots and the wolf, whereas the villager can be done every four days. Uh, ooh, look, a block of emeralds. So, basically, what we've got to do is we've got to continually use our spawner to, to get ourselves a ton of mob essence. So, we should probably make, like, a, some massive tank somewhere that's just going to start with a ton of the stuff. And then what we can do is we can just start spawning cows. Once we've got cows spawned, hopefully what we should be able to do is uh, start to use our wheat to um, to breed the cows, get more cows. Uh, pigs, I'm not too sure because I have no idea how we're going to get carrots to, to breed the pigs. I've looked through the recipes and there is no recipe that we can sieve to get carrots. So I don't know if that's possible. I don't know where that spider's going either. Um, sheep can be quite useful. They'll get us wool. They'll get us all sorts of other stuff. Horses, oof, not too sure what horses are going to be. Uh, needs a bit of leather for a saddle. Would be nice to be tamed after spawning. I guess if we wanted to ride somewhere, they could be quite useful. But I can't really see us riding anywhere. Villagers could be very nice. We could trade with villagers to get some cool stuff. Maybe even get some carrots. That could be kind of useful. That's probably how we're supposed to do that. Look at this. Jesus. That's, uh, we could get a lot of XP just sort of sitting here. and if we're, Oh, gosh. Look at that. Pick up all the bones. We could just activate the creepers. That's, that's all we do. We just activate creepers. Oh, gosh. So, I think with that, guys, I'm going to end the episode there. I know it has been a bit of a short one. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start looking at how to make some energy sources. Because we've got ourselves pretty much a uh, pretty flipping good uh, mob grinder over here. And it's something massive. Look at it. Uh, we've got ourselves a nice big mob grinder. Mobs will slow down during the night because they can spawn everywhere else. 
But what we're going to do is I'm going to look at how to get bigger tanks. And once we've got an unlimited source of power, which I think I'm going to do using tree farms, because we can uh, we can get tree farms going fairly easily uh, using some of the, um, as soon as we get ourselves another machine frame, using all this pneumatic craft stuff. So once we've got ourselves a tree farm, we have ourselves a limited charcoal. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the survival. Oh, Jesus Christ. I mean, attacked. <clears throat> I mean, attacked. Die. Uh, I think I'm going to use the Survivalist uh, engine from Extra Utilities because it's fairly cheap to make. It's just a furnace, some iron, some cobblestone, and some redstone. So if we were to, like, we could probably make one of those right now. We've got the cobblestone. We'll grab some iron and some redstone. We can make quite a lot of these. Now, I, I haven't actually tried this, um, but I know you can, it's unlike a normal generator, which will take coal and just turn it into power, like, within seconds almost and give it out. This thing, I believe, um, lasts longer in terms of um, how long it'll... Like, it'll take a long time to use up a piece of charcoal, but you'll get a lot of power out of it. It's meant for maps like this, where it's where energy is really scarce. So what we can do is, let's say we grab this. I'm not sure if we can just put this down over here. I think we'll have to... Actually, I think we have some leadstone energy conduits, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I think you have to use conduits from the uh, generator here to the machine you wanted to use. And if I'm not mistaken, we should have some lying about somewhere. There we go. We'll take those. And we'll just go and see if we can set this guy up. And you saw how cheap it was to make. We could probably make like a ton of these. And basically, the survival generator will just run on anything that you can put in a normal furnace. So, um, sticks, wood, uh, charcoal, normal coal, all that good stuff. It will run off. Let's try and not get attacked by all the mobs. Let's break this. Let's throw down. Can we do that? I don't know if that works, but I guess we'll find out. I really like the interface on the um, uh, extra utility stuff. Like the fact that it's all spacked and all really nicely spacked as well. All right, let's see. Let's get somewhere we can burn. Uh, we'll slowly waddle over to something we can burn because we are walking very slowly. We'll take four coal. And let's see. I, like I said, I don't think this thing produces a ton of power, but I think it can just produce power over time. So this is power level five, time remaining. So that one piece of coal is going to last 26 minutes. Now, like I said, fairly small amounts of power, but it's going to last us a long time. We don't need a ton of coal. If we had like 10 of these going, 10 pieces of the coal is going to last us half an hour and get us uh, quite a bit of power. I might have to have a look into how much power they do produce because if they, they don't look to produce a lot, I mean, hmm. yeah, I'd have to look into it to see how much they do produce, see if it's worth getting some like uh, thermal expansion dynamos instead. But with that, I'm going to call it there, guys. So thanks for watching. If you did enjoy the video, be sure to like, and I will see you guys next time. Bye-bye.